As you maybe already know, crowdfunded Coffee Gear and I have a bit of a rocky relationship. There's ups, there's downs, and pretty much everything in between. And that same attitude also translates to hand grinders. But the Arco is a two-in-one, made both for lazy mornings and cardio workouts. But beyond that somewhat unique hook, being a hand grinder with a motor, there might be more to it than meets the eye. Since it's essentially now entering the ever-growing market of single dosing, lower tension, all-around coffee grinders, how it performs in those categories, and how it stands up to the current king in that realm, the Niche Zero, is all relevant to this review. But before we find out how it performs, and if it's just over 3,000 Kickstarter backers will be happily grinding and brewing coffee from it after nearly a year of delays, it's time for a quick word from this video's sponsor, Stand Art Magazine. Nothing goes together quite like a cup of coffee and some quality reading, and Stand Art Magazine fits perfectly into that pocket of happiness. Each issue is like a snapshot of coffee culture at that moment in time, with topics ranging from those on the forefront to those on the margins, not to mention some eye-catching design and photography. An included sample of coffee from some of the best roasters in the world helps bring the full experience from your fingertips to your taste buds. So hit the Standart link in the description or head to standartmag.com prometheus to support an independent coffee magazine, the channel, and treat yourself to a year subscription of coffee and copy delivered direct to your doorstep nearly anywhere in the world. Straight from the box, my first impressions were pretty positive. The look may not be for everyone, but I'm into it. It's simple and clean and has a very compact footprint. It's got a decent heft to it, and a mix of metal and plastic parts, but the parts that need to be metal, like the main body of the grinder and its internals, are. The placement and removal of the grinder cylinder from the motorized chassis is just a simple twist lock. Starting at the top, you've got the pretty straightforward on-off switch, and the lever that opens the grinder hopper, which itself has a 50 gram capacity for cold starts, i.e. putting the coffee in before turning it on. And if you prefer a hot start, you can essentially grind endlessly, or at least until the dosing cup is full. Speaking of the dosing cup, it's got a nice snug fit and snaps into place with magnets, and it does fit into a 58mm portafilter if that's your thing. Unlike most hand grinders I've used in the past, the grind adjustments are on an external collar, and boasts four 60-point rotations that equals out to a total of 240 adjustments that are smooth but lock into place with a nice solid click and displays which rotation you're on via notches labeled 0, 1, 2, and 3 on the side of the dosing cup. Overall, its design is minimalistic and intuitive, which I think is what we've all sort of come to expect in this quickly growing market segment. Considering we're talking about a coffee grinder, arguably the most important thing is how the coffee ground on the Arco tastes when it's brewed, so I think it's appropriate to get this out of the way pretty early. When it comes to espresso, conical grinders have a lock on balance and texture, and the Arco is no different. Shots are full-bodied, flavorful, and well-extracted, definitely living up to what I would expect from a grinder in this price point. The dosing cup that fits into a 58mm portafilter is a nice touch, but the grinds tend to be clumpy and still do require the use of a WDT tool or a distributor to ensure an even extraction and clean flow. As you likely can imagine, the filter coffee is also very good, but as conicals do it will lack a little bit in the clarity department, but you still get to reap the benefits of the conical grind distribution of fines and boulders that produce a full-bodied, well-balanced cup. All in all, not a whole lot to say on the flavor front, and in this case, I think no news is good news, and that most if not all people who backed it or bought it will be perfectly happy with the cups it produces. Nothing is perfect, so of course there are some quirks and some downsides to consider if you're in the market for an Arco. For one, it's pretty loud. I'd compare it to a blender or maybe a food processor. But I can't come down too hard on it for that considering the body is so small and there isn't a whole lot of room for sound dampening. That's just the nature of the beast for compact grinders. The grind adjustments, although effective and tactile, aren't all that close to the range they give you on the bottom of the dosing cup. Finding most brew methods that I frequent about 15 to 20 clicks finer than the recommendations. 
But on the bright side, this seems much better than the earliest versions, that had issues with settings even at zero, being much coarser than expected. The Arco also advertises its low retention, but it does retain quite a bit of coffee without some barista intervention. In my experience, up to 2 grams on finer grinds and 0.5 on coarser. But when you either tap or knock the grinder, both will land around the 0.1 to 0.2 range. As simple as it is to attach the grinder cylinder to the motorized base, it does lack any tactile feedback or any sort of true locking mechanism. Instead, it gives you little notches intended to show you proper alignment. But these are easy to miss and overshoot. Plus, it does seem to have some travel while in use, as I usually find it off alignment after a grind or two. But I haven't noticed this travel leads to any noticeable detriment to the coffee ground or the coffee brewed. As a hand grinder, it performs just as well as it does on its electric base. But the main downside I found when using it this way was the portion you hold onto while grinding isn't great for medium to large hands, as I found myself having to adjust my grip as to not accidentally change the grind. When talking about single dose conical driven home grinders, it's hard not to compare it to the king of the realm, the Niche Zero. In a lot of ways, they aren't massively different. The Niche uses 63mm conicals to the Arco's 47. The Niche also grinds at 330 RPM to the Arco's 360. And side by side, the cups of coffee brewed from each grinder are remarkably similar in flavor and texture, which in my book is a win. But the Niche does provide a more stable, quieter platform, and for me this results in a smoother, more pleasant workflow overall, especially when it comes to switching brew methods. But it does take up more of that valuable real estate on your kitchen counter or your coffee bar, and the price tag is roughly $100 more. Overall in the grand scheme, I find the Goat Story Arco to be a quality piece of coffee kit. It meets the standards of grind and cup quality I'd expect for the premium price point, with the unique added ability to turn it into a hand grinder for those on the go. It does lack some of the comforts of most standalone electric grinders, like sound buffering and more straightforward grind adjustments, but for those who see that as a sacrifice, there are just as many people who will love it for its modular capabilities. And beyond its quirks, I think the only difference between choosing the Arco over another electric grinder is maybe the need or the want of a hand grinder. I can definitely see the benefits of having the same adjustments both at home and on the road, but I think the Arco is aimed at a very specific segment of coffee lovers. And finally, as I wrap this up, a quick thank you to the folks at Goat Story for sending me the Arco for review without any expectations or compensation. As always, I appreciate brands who support open and honest feedback. And of course, let me know your thoughts on the Arco. Did you back it? And if so, what about it drew your interest? And if you already have it, how's it treating you? Drop your answers to those questions and any others you may have in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. A big thank you to this month's Patreons, Stephen, Claire, Sam, Bound Coffee, Spookus, Noel, Cheryl, Tom, Sean, Horison, Rose, Squeegee, Ads, Josh, Corey, Tim, Tony, Jason, Jeffrey, Jeff, Mike B, Tyler M, Jose M, BJK Cafe, JRC, Absolute, Steven, Home Barista Coach, Keefe, John, Gumby, Barista Michael, Arthur L, Techcom Advisors, Daniel, Brian, Ed, Happy Camper, Keith, Devo, Ben, Monster04, Bruce, Lilac, Brooks, Henry, Sam, Kang, Sergey, Malconig, Matthew, Lord Bumbley, Marco, Damien, Pat, Nano Roastery, Robin, Bojan, Robert, Robin S, Hexagram, and Suen. And of course, a big thank you to the Barista and Barback tiers. If you want any information on my Patreon, there's a link in the description and in the upper right hand corner right now. Last but not least, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram at Spromethius for content throughout the week, my blog at Spromethius.com, my coffee at LittleGiant.coffee, and as always, stay caffeinated, pony boy. <laughs>